is risen. Christ is risen, risen. indeed. Alleluia. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's God mercy endures forever. The Lord is our strength and song and has become our salvation. We, we rejoice, rejoice with shouts of salvation. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right, right hand, hand of the Lord, Lord is exalted. Open the gates of righteousness. Enter and give thanks to the Lord. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By, By the Lord, Lord has this, this been done. done. It, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. it. Alleluia, alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give, we give you thanks, thanks O God, God. For in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to steal waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the 10th chapter, the 34th verse. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Colossians 3, the first verse. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, 
Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. Today I have good news and bad news. The bad news first. The church pews are empty. The good news, so is the tomb. This whole coronavirus pandemic has moved us to think and behave in new ways. There's nothing like a crisis to stir up our creative juices to keep us moving forward instead of lingering in the woe is me state of being. I am encouraged by your heartfelt expressions of appreciation for the recorded worship services that you are viewing on your electronic devices. One of our youngest members, Morgan Amon, perked up when she heard my voice on the recording of the Palm Passion Worship Service. Her mother, Carrie, sent photos of her sudden change of attention from playing with toys to hearing the familiar voice of Sunday morning worship services. Like all faith communities, we may be physically separated, but we are truly united as the body of Christ through the telephone care chain that is in place and through the electronic airwaves. As we live into this new life, I thank the members of the card ministry and the evangelism committee for calling each member of Zion to let you know that we are thinking of you and that you are not forgotten. I am filled with gratitude for all of the volunteers and staff who came into the church this past week to take care of all the behind-the-scenes tasks that provide the backdrop for our Holy Week passage with Jesus to death on the cross, to new life on this Easter morning. The testimony that led to Jesus' crucifixion was from a witness who quoted Jesus as saying, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. As resurrection people, we know that Jesus was talking about his physical body, which carries the presence of God. But those who heard this claim imagined the physical temple, the brick and mortar structure of stone on stone, where they believed that God dwelled. The temple that would be destroyed and rebuilt in three days is Jesus' own body. These past four weeks have been difficult for faith communities that have not been able to physically gather as the body of Christ. Perhaps you have been asking what it means to be in the presence of God. God is not one to be confined in a temple as we know from the Old Testament stories. God led the people of Israel from Egypt to the promised land in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God remained present with the people and moved with them on their journey and in their conquest as they settled into the promised land. In the New Testament, God shows up in Jesus, in flesh and blood, in a body like ours. And God remains present with us today and always in the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. We are richly blessed with a beautiful church building, which is the sacred space where we gather for worship. But this building, like the temple of Jesus' time, is brick and mortar, brownstone upon brownstone. The real body of Christ is not contained in a building, be it a temple, a stone cathedral, a contemporary worship space, or a small chapel. And on this festival day, 
we celebrate the empty tomb because God's presence is not confined to a stone vault. The body of Christ defies all spatial boundaries. Furthermore, with the gift of technology, we are keenly aware that God is present in this worship space at the same time that God is present in each of your homes. On that first Easter morning, the women find that Jesus is not confined to a stone tomb. The angel of the Lord assures the women that Jesus has been raised. The women are not to remain at the tomb in a fearful, woe is me moment, but they are to move forward, and quickly too. There is news to tell. No bad news, just good news, that the tomb is empty and that Jesus has been raised from the dead. He is going on ahead of them to Galilee. Jesus is on the loose. He is moving ahead of them, but first he stops to meet their, the women on their way to tell the good news to the disciples. In that moment, they take hold of his feet and worship him. He is the temple of God's presence. He is worshiped in that moment of appearance. And then at Jesus' instruction, they continue on their journey to tell his disciples the good news and to tell them about the rendezvous point in Galilee. The temple of God is on the move. The presence of God is on the move in our world today. We may be confined to our houses and separated from the brick and mortar buildings where we gather to worship, but God has and continues to move beyond the boundaries of our structures. The power of the Holy Spirit moves through us, connecting us with a God that knows no boundaries. Jesus' death on the cross broke through the boundaries of sin and the grave. With this whole COVID-19 pandemic, we can feel like we are stuck on Good Friday, in the shadow of the cross, weeping, upset with the world, frustrated with what we cannot control. But we are not Good Friday people who get stuck at the cross. We place our trust in God. We are Easter people of faith who move through death to life, who move beyond the places and things that try to hold us down, including contagious viruses. We discover ways to live, a, live anew, be it getting outside in this beautiful spring weather to exercise or calling one another just to say hello or diving into a project that we put on the shelf a while ago because we just didn't have time. Now we are given the gift of time, the opportunity to experience a healthy change in what was overbooked, stressed, stressed out schedules. The cross, the symbol of crucifixion and death, was transformed into a symbol of forgiveness and life with Jesus' death and resurrection. The cross no longer remains a cross beam of shame and death. It is a symbol of glory, of God's glory and miraculous wonder in the resurrection of Jesus. We celebrate Jesus' passage through death to new life today as the story of his resurrection is proclaimed once again. Yes, there are times when our hearts are like the boundaries of the tomb, hard and cold, sealed with a stone. But the love of God and the good news of Jesus' resurrection cannot be contained even inside our tomb-like hearts. This news is such a miracle, so glorious, so awesome that we must share it with others. 
To try to contain the news of Jesus' resurrection is like the women keeping what they witnessed to themselves, staying frozen in time like the guards outside the tomb. We are called to witness to the living Christ, to his life of teaching, his miraculous healings, his abundant love and grace. Nothing can contain this good news. Oppressive regimes have tried to do so, but God's presence is more powerful and widespread than the boundaries of an earthly kingdom. And so our hearts burst forth with joy and gratitude for the new life that God gives to us here on earth and in the eternal kingdom to come. Resurrection life keeps happening all around us. Acts of nature such as a contagious virus might try to steal this life or oppressive governments might try to silence those who come to believe in Christ, but nothing can stop the presence of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, alive and active in our world and in each of our lives. There were people who tried to contain God in a temple, who tried to silence God's voice in a death on the cross, who tried to keep God sealed up in a tomb, and they discovered time and time again that God is not containable. God in Jesus and by the work of the Holy Spirit is on the loose and is stirring up the world to recognize the miracle of Easter, bringing us together in new and creative ways, renewing our lives. We hear Jesus' words, to go and tell. We believe. We fall to our knees and worship him. Then we go to proclaim this glorious news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord to give her a life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your role of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn for those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving and healing presence, especially in this time when our world strives to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen the celebration of this festival day as people of faith gather in their homes to hear the news of the resurrection on the internet airwaves. By the power of your spirit, connect us as the body of Christ in this time of social distancing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I have seen him in the power and the glory forever and ever.
May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 